like it was that day after. Yes. Good morning. I'd like to call the Henry County School Board to meet in order. Comments. We don't have anyone. No one has contacted Superintendent's office to request time on the agenda. So we'll move on. Awards and recognition. A. Dalton McCulloch School Nutrition Award. <coughs> Ms. Hatchett. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Henry County Public Schools was honored to receive the Dorothy McAuliffe School Nutrition Award presented by No Kid Hungry Virginia this fall. The award is named in honor of Virginia First Lady Dorothy McAuliffe in recognition of her efforts to end childhood hunger and celebrates Virginia school divisions that have gone above and beyond by operating all available federal child nutrition programs and achieving significant participation in the school breakfast program. The awards were presented to divisions where at least 70% of students qualify for free or reduced price meals and eat school lunch as well as school breakfast. Divisions honored also serve meals and snacks through after school and adult care food programs and serve summer meals through one of three eligible programs. And as you know, in Henry County Public Schools, we have a wide variety of meals and snacks available to our students, not just during the school year, but also during the summer. So Ms. Lexa is here this morning with the award, and we'd like to take a photo with Mr. Milner and Dr. Cox.
receipt of that award is good and it's bad. It's good, in fact, that all our children will be have a chance for a good and healthy breakfast. It's sad because in any case, the state of our economy. <coughs> Next item is take your legislators to school month. Each year, Virginia School Boards Association designates the month of November as Take Your Legislator to School Month. In Henry County Public Schools, we are taking a slightly different approach this year and expanding our events throughout the fall and winter to accommodate the schedules of our state and local legislators. We're excited to share the great things happening in our schools with our legislators through events <coughs> such as a Skype discussion session with Senator Tim Kane at FC Middle School in October, and he has also expressed interest in doing that with several other classes throughout the course of the school year, so we're working to schedule that. A visit with Morgan Griffith at Magna Vista High School this Friday, so if you're available and would like to join us for that discussion, he would welcome you to be there as well. And we're also putting together a video where we can share division-wide highlights with legislators in November because their schedules don't often permit that they're able to travel here for an in-person tour. We'll also be scheduling chats and visits with other legislators from December through the month of March so that they can see the wide variety of great things that are happening in our school division. As part of the recognition of VSBA's Take Your Legislator to School Month, Governor McAuliffe issued the following proclamation. And it says, whereas it is critical that all students in Virginia are afforded the opportunity to receive a quality education in Virginia's public schools, and whereas a strong and effective public school system is essential to the economic prosperity of Virginia and ensures that we continue to make social, technological, and scientific advancements, and whereas school boards and legislators must work together to promote high academic standards and excellent facilities that help all of Virginia's students become productive, hardworking individuals, and whereas Virginia school boards play a critical role in fostering close relationships between schools and legislators to strengthen and improve Virginia's public education system, and whereas the support of our legislators contributes significantly to the success and achievement of Virginia's public schools, and whereas Virginia School Boards Association Take Your Legislator to School Month serves as an opportunity to promote productive relationships between state legislators and their local education providers, and whereas the SBA Take Your Legislator to School Month is also an opportunity to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of the professionals working to strengthen Virginia's public schools. Now therefore, I, Terrence R. McAuliffe, do hereby recognize November 2017 as Virginia School Boards Association Take Your Legislator to School Month in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and I call this observance to the attention of all of our citizens. And again, we'll be working throughout the course of the fall and winter semesters to make sure that our legislators have the opportunity to see the great things happening in our schools. Thank you. I think that's on our agenda is update on disability awareness month. Business. Good morning, Chairman Milner, members of the board. Just wanted to give you guys kind of an overview of what we did for Disability History and Awareness Month, which was the month of October. Around the county, we had daily announcements on famous celebrities um, with disabilities, class, class and hallway displays, fall festivals, as well as pumpkin carving. Here's a picture of some of our hearing interpreters that support students at Field Elk Hollinsville Middle School, as well as Stanley Town Elementary School. They also support um, and provide case management um, to, building, to students in other buildings who may not have as severe of a, a disability. And in celebrating deaf awareness, Stanley Town Elementary students, they learned simple signs such as the ABCs, explored the positive aspects of deafness through videos and announcements, and became familiar with assistive technology used by the students with hearing impairments. Our fall games that we have annually were were slated to be held on October 13th in Field Collinsville. However, they were canceled due to inclement weather, but we are researching and assessing some spring dates, perhaps in um, early to mid-April, so that we can have that and accommodate them. 
Our safety care training, our countywide programming that provides strategies and techniques for de-escalation and physical management, we've shifted from nonviolent crisis intervention to this because of the de-escalation benefits on the front end. We're trying not to get to the physical management, so we want to provide them as many strategies as possible to make sure that we're not getting to um, physical management. We are ahead of the curve um, as some of the um, legislation has stalled on restraint and seclusion at the state level. Um, but we, um, by the end of January, we will have um, about approximately 100 trained personnel um, consisting of administrators, care professionals, um, general and special education teachers, and we are going to provide some upcoming training to families. We have seven certified trainers right now in-house. Uh, we provide all of that instruction here uh, within the county. And this is a picture of our training that we had. Um, we had our second day of certification on Tuesday, um, and that's Ms. Hurd and several people, um, our group of 20 that we trained. Um, so that's our first, first full set that we've trained as in-house trainers. Our special education advisory committee is parent-led and focused on improving special education within the county. Um, we meet quarterly and provide opportunities for community partners to share resources, et cetera. They also provide budget input. And our next meeting is Monday the 13th at 6 p.m. DeCapo, who you guys had the pleasure of seeing uh, present here last year about this time, um, we have expanded that program to include our uh, seven, uh, our, all seven of our early childhood special education classrooms this year. And they provide, uh, DeCapo provides adapted music instruction um, especially during this school year, so the classes at the following buildings, and that looked a lot better uh, when I did it on the screen. So it, on my paper, it's a nice column, so sorry about that. Um, but that's where we're currently serving, and that's for our students predominantly with labels of intellectual disabilities or autism, and we do serve one emotional disability classroom at the transitional day program, because that is a separate program off-site. They have limited access to some of the other things that our students within the buildings have access to. And that was the, um, the, the student performance from last year held at Magna Vista. And our upcoming events, um, we um, I presented previously on Strengths Finder and I'm Determined, and that's our, um, our efforts to focus increasing self-advocacy and, and autonomy by identifying strengths and then having students learn how to apply those strengths to their areas of weakness <coughs> to kind of overcome those. And our DeCapo finale um, for our students will be held December 5th at 1030 at Magna Vista High School, and we'd sure love for you guys to come out to support that as well. Do you guys have any questions? Did I see something in here about training for parents of some of these students too? Yes, sir. The safety care training, um, we have not taken that module yet. The seven, our seven trainers that are in-house, we will take a training module, and we plan to do that at a SEAC meeting. Um, to kind of give some parents some, some resources in de-escalation and provide whatever training safety care designates to parents so that we're consistent um, and parents have some type of resource that they can turn to within the home setting. I think it's really important that uh, coordination between what we are doing in the schools and what they might be able to uh, substantiate and, and work with at home I noticed that we teach our children, or teach our children at Bell how to sign. What task that is available within the community to help parents so that they can learn how to sign with these children? We have actually had a lot of discussions about this. Um, I have parents that are interested in possibly starting a, a parent group. Um, and hopefully they're coming to the SEAC meeting so we can kind of bridge that gap and give them that um, community that they're kind of looking for. Um, my um, deaf education teacher, Ms. Clements, has pulled together some resources that we can provide parents that need access. The DOE has several resources. Um, as for actual classes, I've looked, I know PH has some classes and there's some classes available in Roanoke as well. Um, and then I know that my caring interpreters and the teachers have worked with with parents individually on an individual basis if they need some extra assistance in trying to um, you know partner them up with what will serve their needs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions or comments, Ms. Luke? Thank you. Elementary School, Mr. Keith Scott. Mr. Mr.
Chairman, members of the school board, I'm pleased to share a few good updates for the Meadowview project as it's coming along. Um, wing A, they've already begun setting some bathroom fixtures and the cabinet work uh, throughout the classrooms is, is underway. We've got uh, polished concrete work taking place on the first floor of Wing B. The, uh, when I, at the time I submitted this agenda item, the, uh, the weather had halted the work along Bigsburg Road. But since then, we had a little bit of good weather. They were able to get some asphalt down. Now it's been halted again. So it, it's some work taking place on that. They were able to get some base stone work done back in the back lot for the um, uh, bus parking lot area. So, so they've been kind of bouncing around based on the weather area, and it's working out okay. The um, concrete work continues for the curb and sidewalk um, work throughout the, the whole grounds. The soccer field is to grade. There was some concern at the beginning that um, were we going to have enough dirt to make all that work, and we actually went up, we're only about two feet. That's right at two feet lower than what we had anticipated. So that's a pretty good estimate on that. It's a grade, and that's where it'll stay. Uh, and we'll adjust everything else to work out. Uh, the painting continues throughout the school. This gentleman's working is about seven days a week uh, throughout the painting, and that, that's areas that are available. We've got concrete in the main lobby forward, and the main stairway is complete. And, of course, sheetrock is complete in the dining room area. So a lot of good things taking place. Um, so we still see a lot of cars out there, but not quite as many because we're releasing a few kind of subcontractors as time goes on. So. Any questions? Anyone have any questions or comments for Mr. Scott on Meadowview? Uh, we were out there the other day. We were very encouraged with the uh, work that's been accomplished and how things are coming along. And I was also pleased to see in the newspaper where the teachers were there so they could see firsthand what the work areas they would be receiving look like. So I think we're making great progress in that. <coughs> Was at uh, Bassett the other day. So at the next meeting, could we have an update on where we are? Phase four or phase three on Bassett? I can speak to provide that now. Yeah, I can do that now if you like to. The reason you may have seen the restrooms were still shut down. So that you says, nope, got to do it over. That's right. Yes, sir. That's what happened. We picked out probably 25 or 30 tiles that I didn't like the way it was installed. And um, so we've labeled those and I did. We've held the contractor's money and not paid that, and he's working on those at nighttime trying to get those tiles replaced until we approve that project. So okay. That's why they're shut down. He's in there. He was in there. He'll be back tonight to continue working on the tile work. He's doing that at nighttime to try to avoid interruption for the, uh, for the students. But it's tiles that were already installed that didn't turn out very nice, and so we just have to redo that. Also, the uh, floor tiles. Is that in the next phase, or will that be completed this year? Uh, you know, the discoloration, and also there's some tiles with uh, broken edges, stuff like that. I was talking with Des Agnew, and we were looking at those as we were walking along. Right, you're talking about the main hallway area, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, so what we're trying to get the um, uh, we're trying to get all the other other equipment updated before we went to the tile, because what what we ran into, if you'll notice, like on the back hallway, that you can't find that color of tile to match anymore, of course. And um, when we changed out that equipment, we had some leak on the floor and some of the tiles got, got damaged and had to be removed and replaced. So once we get all that completed, then our next step was to come back through with the more beautification, if you will, on the floor. So that's a continuation of the stage that we're in right now. That's not future. That's future. Yes, sir. That's future. That's not part of this actual phase right now. That's stuff that will be handled in our typical operations budget, not necessarily a bid-out project for that, because that's stuff that we can do in-house. And work the sub a contractor for our set. Thank you. Next, we have our consent agenda. As you can see, we have three items on the consent agenda. The first one being approval of the minutes it's an October 5, 2017 regular meeting. Item B, approval of bills for payment. Item C, approval of overnight and out of state field trips requests. We can approve of these. As a group, or we can pull anyone out that you may have pulled out. What's your pleasure? Who can present a, a, a approval of the consent agenda as presented? Second. The motion is second that we approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Thank you. On our action agenda, 
consideration of 2018 legislative agenda for Virginia General Assembly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can provide the board with the um, proposed legislative agenda uh, for you all to consider. And um, I wanted to point out a few changes. The, um, some of these items are the same that they were when we <clears throat> passed our agenda a couple of years ago. Uh, the budget and funding section is relatively the same. Uh, the gist of that is uh, asking for support for funding that comes along with educational mandates that we receive. Also, uh, continuing to support the removal of the SOQ support position cap that's been in place since 2009, um, as well as the additional funding for teacher salaries that you know we've been working on as a school division for the last several years, as well as <coughs> the expansion of literary loans, which will provide um, some funding low cost loans for um, capital improvement, which you know has been a challenge for us for the last several years. The student assessment and accountability section is very similar uh, to what we've had in the past. It talks about the importance of measuring student growth as well as achievement, which we've been doing in Henry County for the last several years. And the state is moving in this direction and we want to certainly show support for that. Also that uh, success is measured many different ways, not just on a test, test score on one particular day. So we want to make sure that's a part of that process. Uh, we also want some local flexibility because Henry County is uh, implementing a lot of performance-based uh, assessments that, that we feel should be able to be counted towards state accountability so that we're not having our students take our local assessments plus statewide assessments on top of that. Uh, also talking about uh, other assessments we give like the National Career Readiness or the Virginia Placement Test, which we feel should or could be used in lieu of the state test. Uh, we also want to make sure that accountability is not just about test scores and we want to make sure we're preparing our students for life beyond graduation. And when we get to our discussion a little later today in our work session, we'll talk about how we're looking at redesigning high school in Henry County and expanding our career and technical opportunities. And we want to make sure the state supports us with these efforts because we know that we can't continue to do the same things we've always done and expect to prepare our students for life after high school. Uh, the teacher shortage is a new area, or well, relatively new. We had some items related to teacher shortage in the past, but in particular, this is a nationwide problem. So um, locally, it's been the topic of much discussion through the superintendent group, as well as the Virginia School Board Association and other groups, is that we need some short-term and long-term strategies to address the teacher shortage. We, we've got some immediate challenges today that need to be addressed. Uh, long-term, we need some more, uh, some other options that need to be implemented over time. We also are talking about specific areas where we're in need of teachers who can teach STEM related. Those are science, technology, engineering, and mathematics courses, as well as career and technical education. Um, we want to offer some of these courses. We don't have qualified staff who can uh, teach these courses. So that, that's, uh, that means that we need some flexibility in hiring some folks there. We also have had a lot of trouble with the middle school endorsements. Sometimes those really um, keep us from having a certified teacher because they're only certified in certain areas. I know when I got my degree, I could teach anything in middle school. You know, but now it's, uh, you can only teach one or two subject areas, which makes it very challenging for us. Um, the other item that, that we've added that you haven't seen before is uh, student discipline. And the reason this is very important is because we are doing a lot of things to address student discipline in a positive manner to decrease our suspensions and expulsions. We're trying to implement positive behavior interventions. And we need support for this. There was a bill that came out, several bills that came out last year that talked about limiting the number of suspensions and those kinds of things. Uh, what we're trying to promote is instead of telling us we can't suspend, you know, give us the resources we need to do a better job with, with discipline. And that's funding for PBIS and implementation, which we've already started in Henry County, which I know you're aware of. Also partnerships 
with higher education where we can get support uh, for our students and our staff. Also looking at expansion of alternative education programs. Currently we have a regional alternative education program as well as our local alternative education program, but we only serve secondary students right now. And uh, the regional grant only allows us to serve secondary students. We feel like um, there's a need now with all the challenges our young students have with the trauma they've experienced in their homes that um, our elementary students sometimes are in need of an option other than, um, than the traditional school. And the other item is we need additional staff and support because you need to get to the root cause of student misbehavior. And that means that we may need more psychologists, more counselors, counselors who can actually spend time to work with students who are having these challenges. You know, the counselor's role has changed where they're doing a whole lot of things um, that's taking away from the time they need to work with individual students. So we feel strongly that these are the kinds of things we need to address student misbehavior rather than limitations on suspensions. And because that doesn't affect the root cause, that just addresses a, a symptom. And the last item that we've had before is our Labor Day opening. You all know that we've been able to open before Labor Day because of snow. And uh, we brought this up in the past that we feel strongly that we should not have to rely on how many snow days we have each year to determine if we can open before Labor Day. We feel like um, that should be a, a local decision. And we've been able to open before Labor Day for several years, as you know. Um, and we're good for now because we had the year with 16 snow days. <laughs> so that has really upped our average. Uh, but again, it's frustrating to have to worry about that. We, we prefer to, to just be approved for a pre-Labor Day opening without having to count snow days. So th this is where we are now, and it's brought up for four-year consideration. Um, uh, I'd like to I'd like for the board to approve at some point, whether you want to approve today or at some point in the future. The reason that it's important for us to have this is because when we talk with our legislators, when we meet with them, I'll give you an example. I just met recently with uh, Senator Stanley. And uh, when we meet with our legislators, it's important for us to have something that we can hand to them and some talking points that we can, we can speak from so that we have a list of items that we want to advocate for as a local school division for our community and, and our schools. And I just think it's thing for us to post on our website as well so that, so that everyone knows um, what we're advocating for. And when I get phone calls from legislators, I can, I can speak right off of this document. So that's why it's a good thing to have. The other thing I'll share with you is this is also aligned to a lot of other legis legislative agendas through the BSBA, through VAS, which is a superintendent's organization. I reference all of those. It's not exactly the same, but there are items in here, you know, that are similar, uh, which I think is important for you to know as well, that, that we do look at, we look at those as we prepare those stuff. I would love to get feedback from the board at this point on any changes, concerns, or, uh, or, or adjustments that you'd like to make uh, at this time. When you and your staff have done an excellent job, I was very impressed. This is a very thorough legislative agenda. And I appreciate it. It's about as close to perfect as you can get it. Just a question, not, not, <clears throat> not it would affect this, but uh, the point you made there in being able to uh, hire teachers who have the expertise in the field but aren't certified. Is that something that uh, is a legislative matter, or is that something to work through the school board, I mean the state school board, uh, to address? Uh, does that, have, would that have to have legislative action? It is a two-pronged two approach, really. Um, there are some areas where the Virginia Board of uh, Education and the Department of Ed can give us some flexibility. Uh, since we've been working through this process, there are um, some areas where we we have a little bit of flexibility already, but there are other areas that are, you know, governed by legislation, yeah, governed by legislation that have, have to be addressed. And uh, so really we, we need to come at it 
uh, from both angles. I will tell you that this is a high priority uh, for the governor. I know the governor just hosted a teacher shortage summit uh, just last month where the focus was on uh, things that we can do. And some of the things they talked about were can the local superintendent extend a provisional license from three to five years to give more time for uh, if a teacher's doing a good job and, and they're um, been effective in the classroom. Or, or maybe it's um, using experiences uh, to apply towards a teacher license. But where you need to be careful is you don't want to lower the standard. You know, but what many superintendents have said is we've all hired teachers that don't have the exact credential, but they're doing an outstanding job uh, with the content and working with students. So we want to have some local flexibility. So we need some immediate, as you all know, um, I think we're still short about three English teachers right now uh, that we're, um, we haven't been able to fill. And we are much better off than many of our colleagues in this region. And I think it's because we start very early with our recruiting process. But we have colleagues um, who are up to 30 teachers short at this point in the year. And uh, we're fortunately not at that point, but but we're all competing for the same pool. <laughs> so um, it, it's getting more and more challenging. During the recent uh, election, quite a bit was brought up about the Career and Technical Center. Uh, if I'm correct, I think that Danville, Pittsburgh County, and Franklin County have such. And you and I have talked about the possibility of going in with Martinsville, maybe to do such. Is that something that we need to look at now? Because in previous governors, the push was on college education. When Governor McAuliffe, he seemed to have noted that there are technical jobs out there that are paying more than people with uh, degrees, four-year degrees. And so it's sort of been a switch. So uh, is it possible that we can look farther into this, maybe in the Korea Technical Center in uh, Marshall slash Henry County? Yes, uh, actually, we're going to talk about that a little bit later today uh, during the work session. but. Um, and I'll also tell you that we're having our initial strategic planning sessions with various groups, and that's the theme that's coming up from everybody. We need more trades, more vocational education opportunities. We are, uh, we're, as, as you know, we're working on CCL becoming a career academy for us, and we've already added cosmetology over there. And uh, as a part of our budget discussions, we're looking at moving some other programs over there. I have talked to Dr. Talley about ways that we can partner on some of those programs, and we've also talked about uh, maybe there's a couple programs we can offer at Marksville High School that we can open to, to our students across the board. So we have uh, we've had some initial conversations. We haven't worked out details about that, but uh, he's very interested in partnering, and um, I'm very interested in expanding our career and tech options. And what a lot of people don't realize is we have a lot of career tech options already in our schools. So we need to do a better job of communicating that because I hear people saying all the time that we don't have career tech programs. We do. Uh, what we're trying to do is we want to take them to the next level. We want to have some advanced opportunities, which we'll talk about in our work session today. And part of that is working with Patrick Henry Community College because we're talking about a public safety academy, an IT academy that we've had available for years. We can't get students to sign up. And that's the other thing that we're, we're fighting, that people don't always understand. The fire uh, an EMT program, you know, I've had people tell me many times, why did you take that program away? We never took that program away. We brought the program back when I arrived here six years ago. The reason the program's not running is because, you know, we had two students sign up for it. Or three students, you can't run a program with three students enrolled. So um, what I think a lot of people don't understand is some of these programs are not running because we don't have the student interest. And uh, what really concerns me is the IT Academy is a phenomenal opportunity. 
students to go and get cybersecurity and network certified. <coughs> they can come out of high school making six five thousand dollars a year at 18 years old, and we we can't get it to run. And we think that we might actually have a group of students uh, next fall because we've recruited some some tech students this <laughs> for spring semester that we're hoping. Uh, there are about 12 of those that we're hoping will start up that program. Um, but we all need to work on getting the word out that these opportunities are here. We just need for them to take advantage of it. You know, you've all heard the expression, if you build it, they will come. Uh, we build it, and they're not always coming. So we need to figure out a way uh, to get them to come to that, um, to those opportunities. And something else just happened prior to you. Notice now that there's a uh, nurse shortage. And we had the nursing program in the school. And uh, I think the last year of the eight or ten students in the class, only two of them were our students. The rest were. So, uh, we talked about the nursing program. As a matter of fact, uh, again, I don't want to steal too much of our thunder for uh, the work session coming up, but uh, we wanted to run the nursing program, and we continue to run into roadblocks. But where I think we're finally um, going to land is um, Patrick Henry is going to work with us on a, a health sciences um, academy where the students can get all of their prerequisites taken care of through high school so that they be very competitive because I understand it's very competitive to get into the Patrick Henry nursing program. But our students will have the ability to get all of their prerequisites, their anatomy, physiology, and, and many of their prerequisites done prior to enrollment at Patrick Henry, so that would put them in good standing. And then, of course, the other exciting thing that we'll talk about is we're understanding that SOBA Health will provide some funding to not only help our students with internships, but also uh, help pay for our students' education, which we're going to talk about uh, here in a little while. So uh, we have a work session today on our uh, future plans for career and tech. And uh, back when you were talking about teacher shortage, I've been talking to, uh, well, really five different people that were professionals. And I've mentioned the career switching program, and they had never heard of it. I don't think we're doing enough to get that information out to the public about the career switching program. Sure. We, uh, you know, what we did is, and I, 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 it's a shame that Mrs. Landon's not here, uh, but. Uh, Mrs. Terrier could talk about this too, but uh, we, we do our um, recruitment fair, a job fair, and what we've added to that particular job fair is we, we have information we provide on the career switcher program, and when we do all of our advertising for that um, job fair, we talk about even if you don't have the certification, come learn about the career switcher program, and did you want to talk about that at all? Anything to add to that? We're, uh, um, but we're, we're working on that. And we, can, we talked about it on our television show. right? So we're, we're doing what we can to recruit because we have people show up to the job fair who they don't have the credential. But in <coughs> career and technical education, you can get certified based on experience in particular because uh, uh, we can hire people who have experience in the field. Uh, so there's some flexibility there as well. So we're trying to get the word out that even though you don't have a certification yet in teaching, we can work with you on helping you make that happen. In this legislative agenda, I think it's very important that we all have a copy of this too because uh, I don't know how I got on it, but I'm on an email list with some of the legislators like Marshall and Adams and Stanley. And they send me emails from time to time, and, and we need to use those to let them keep them abreast of what we're really looking for. It helps you stay on topic when, um, you know, we have some conferences coming up where I think you're all going to get a chance to talk with some legislators. So anytime you can of something, I will tell you, I've met with legislators recently, and I don't get to talk about all these things during that meeting, but I can leave them with a copy, and they've all told me they will read it, and they've assured me that they will take it into account. So I think that's why it's important that we have something. Mr. Chairman, I'll offer a motion that we approve the proposed legislative agenda. Second. The motion is second that we approve the 
legislative agenda as presented. All in favor, indicate by raising your right hand. Unanimous. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll move on into the superintendent's market highlight report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm proud that we have some highlights uh, for the month of October. Uh, the first item, the four C's. Students at Axon Elementary recently had the opportunity to use several four C's when working together to complete STEM activities in the library. Mrs. Mead led students in these innovative and engaging STEM activities to enhance students' critical thinking skills. Swimming. Campbell Court Elementary's first graders took a trip to the Martinsville YMCA to take part in the Swim It program in October. This program provides first grade students an introductory course in how to master the basics of swimming. The program also builds each child's confidence by mastering something that at first may be frightening, but by the end of the course, they are swimming on their own and loving it. And this is such a great partnership with the YMCA that we're very proud to offer our students. Uh, we're all in this together. Technology staff members Beth Williamson and Alex Clifton taught and assisted Ms. Tucker's class at Council Primary with iPads recently. Students were able to problem solve and got an authentic hands-on insight into the IT world. Rainy day picnic. Students at Drew Mason Elementary School kicked off the year with their annual back to school cookout at a recent PTA meeting. Families made the most of the event despite rainy weather and enjoyed sharing a meal together in the school hallways. Passport to the Universe. GW Carver hosted a STEM week during the month of October. The program Apollo to the Moon showcased a detailed and detailed the history of, the, of NASA and the development of the space program for, for, for students in grades one through five. Students also experienced the interactive science world, the Dome Theater, which included Into the Deep, Moons, and Passport to the Universe. To conclude the week's celebration, students and families were invited to take part in STEM night with varying classroom activities and inter interactive modules set up in the gym. Marble Roll. Fourth grade students at John Red Smith Elementary worked collaboratively on a marble roll recently. Students discussed how friction would change a marble speed depending on the material the marble was rolled across and tested a variety of bases to gather comparative data for group analysis. At school and on the road. Mount Olivet students were treated to STEM activities at school and on the road in October. First grade students took a field trip to the Greensboro Science Center and STEM coordinator Phyllis Mead visited the library to meet with the students of all grade levels to provide hands-on activities that required collaboration and persistence. Book or Treat. October was an exciting month for Rich Acres Elementary students. Magna Vista football players and cheerleaders visited on October 6th to read stories to the children and fielded a variety of questions from the future warriors. Family night for the month of October was a book or treat event. Students and their families decked out in costume visited each classroom to receive treats, including a book from each child's teacher. Superhero shout out. First and third grade students at Sandville have their art displayed in the school's Hall of Art this month. The third, grade, the third graders created an image of themselves as superheroes. During the body drawing steps, they discussed how to use simple shapes as a basis for a complex shape. The background illustrates contrast between darker and lighter colors. Mr. Kendall's colleagues recognized him, recognized him earlier this school year by giving him the first Sandville superhero shout out for his work helping students with fine motor skills, math, reading, and school routines. Deaf Awareness Week. To celebrate Deaf Awareness Week, students at Stanley County Elementary learned simple signs such as the alphabet, watched videos, and heard announcements highlighting the positive aspects of deafness and viewed instruments and assistive devices used by deaf individuals. Fifth grade students also heard a presentation about deafness and asked questions to help them better understand and relate to their class. A penny for your thoughts. Students in Beverly Cecil's sixth grade science class at FC Middle School were engaged as they used lab technology and safety procedures to study the properties of water during the month of October. The students, researchers, Student researchers conducted a series of lab experiments and logged their data on their iPads to share with the class during a lab debrief session at the end of the unit. It's alive. Students at Mrs. Copeland's life science class at Laurel Park Middle recently ventured outside to discover living versus non-living organism, organisms. Using the six characteristics of living things as a guide, students were amazed at how many items they were able to place into each category. Students shared their findings and closed the lesson by reviewing 
what caused an item to be classified as slick. Emancipation education. Bassett High School's Mrs. Erica Agee frequently grabs her students' attention by getting into character. During a recent unit on Civil War, Mrs. Agee dressed the part as she delivered Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. Dressing the part is just one of the ways students and staff are working to ensure they never forget what they learned in history class. I'm sure that was memorable. Uh, quote graffiti. English 9 pre-AP students at Magna Vista High School have been creating meaningful graffiti this month and responding to and analyzing quotes from George Orwell's Animal Farm. Student groups work to graphically represent terms and phrases of importance in the work of drawing graffiti for display in the classroom. Calling all coders. Middle school girls from Laurel Park and Fieldale Collinsville attended the Capital One Coders Experience on Saturday, October 14th. The one-day program held at the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research taught students how to design and develop their own Android mobile applications using MIT App Inventor. Mentors from Capital One worked with the girls in each step of the app development. Capital One hopes that by introducing these students to coding, they will empower young women to enter the STEM fields. Several student teams were chosen to, rep to present their apps at the Women in Technology Conference in Richmond, Virginia. And we'd like to wish Laurel Park's Grayson Russell good luck as her team competes at the WIT Conference in November. Club Padres. Families from around the division enjoyed participating in EL Family Night at Laurel Park in October. Career and Technical Education and EL Coordinator Daniel Rodriguez and his team shared updates with families, discussed common assessments and best practices for EL students, as well as highlighted important dates in the school calendar and resources available in our schools. Each family enjoyed sharing dinner together and members were given free books from the 4-H organization. What a great partnership. Supporting student needs. Thanks to the diligent work of the local back to school program and the program's grants coordinator, Cindy Cox, each of our high schools now has a full pantry of school supplies, non-perishable food, and personal hygiene items available for students in need who, um, who may need additional items outside of school. We are very excited to have Shiloh Temple of Ridgeway and the Community Fellowship in Collinsville to partner with Magnavist and Bassett, respectively, to restock the school pantries as the need arises. So this is a great partnership uh, with our community. And I know I shared this. I see Reverend Milner in the audience here uh, at the ministerial meeting where I talked to many of our church leaders about some of our needs, and many of our churches want to help support this project as well. Congratulations to the following teachers who completed the Exabyte Challenge, FC Middle School's Wayne Thompson on Apple TV for use in his classroom. Congratulations. Mount Olive Elementary School's April Peters won a flat panel TV for use in her classroom. FC Middle School's Amy Ferguson won an Apple TV for use in her classroom. And Drew Mason Elementary School's Ashley Cox won a document camera for use in her classroom. So congratulations to all of those teachers who are taking a risk and using new technology with their students. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this does complete my highlight report. I have other items in the um, my section that I'll be glad to answer any questions about if you have any. Any questions or comments on the superintendent's monthly highlight report? Questions or comments on receipt and expenditure through September? Energy and facility report, teacher cabinet meeting summary, membership report, discipline summary report, fundraisers approved, fundraisers approved by the superintendent. Thank you. We move along. Matters from the board. Mr. Chairman, uh, the recent election for governor, I, I would offer a motion that we ask Dr. Cotton to write Governor elect Norsom a uh, congratulatory letter. And uh, we look forward to working with him, and we need his help in uh, giving us more money to do what's got to be done in the school system. Thank so, you. Do 
Do I hear a second? Second. The motion is second that a letter be sent to the governor elect from the school system, congratulating him and asking for continued, asking for his support in the upcoming four years. Any further comments on this? All in favor, indicate by raising your right hand. Thank you. Something very minor, but I'm pretty sure it can be taken care of. I've already mentioned it to the superintendent. I was visited at FC, looked at their new greenhouse, very nice. When I was talking with the principal and asked if there was any vandalism going on, he said there was a little. I think with that new feature out there, I think a fence is needed on that hillside because she said that there's an apartment complex at the top of the hill. So something we can consider, and I'm pretty sure it's not that mind-boggling or upset our budget that much, but something I'd like for us to look at as possible doing it. Mr. Chairman, that's something that we'll be looking at because even before that greenhouse was there, we've had people kind of come through those woods and appear in the back of the building. So that's something we're already talking about. Thank you. We observed back years ago at Mount Olive and also at the GW College, we've got quite a deer population, and some of the root deer will just wander out, and the children don't know. They go out there, and then there come the mother. So, you know, I think it's very important. Check it when we do this. We move on into meetings and events, holidays, 23-24, December 7th, our next monthly meeting. On a momentous occasion, Curtis Mills' last monthly meeting. The holiday for the students, Dr. Conner? You might have to take a day off. Okay. For staff. And January 4th, annual reorganization. And also conferences, annual DSBA conference in Williamsburg, 15th and 17th. I understand everyone has signed up. Is that correct, Mr. Coley? Thank you. That's next week. Something I'd like to mention, they have a, I think Thursday is Spirit Day, and I think it would be nice if we have, if we would wear something to represent our school system, you know, a T-shirt or something like that, or maybe underneath our hood. Anything to, because I know sometimes complete school districts all dress alike supporting their school district. And I think that we are as proud of our school district as anyone is, probably more than some of them. And I think it would be nice if we have something like this. If we don't have any of those T-shirts, I'm pretty sure there's T-shirts around somewhere with any kind of schools on it. Maybe you can wear them underneath your jacket if you don't. Like me, I'm too skinny to wear a T-shirt as an outer garment, but, you know. Well, I don't have that problem. I prefer pink. Well, you're right. Sounds good. This is flat again. But for something to think about. I know there's one day where we're all wearing the support public education T-shirts, right? Is that a, that's a 60. I'm as happy as those polo shirts. The board members don't have those, do they? We've got some conferences next week. So we'll put our heads together and see. I'm sure we have some T-shirts somewhere. And the Capitol Conference, January 22nd, 23rd. NSBA Conference, San Antonio. Anyone going to San Antonio? Anyone considering that? Okay. Still too late to sign up? Still time. Still time to sign up. Time. Okay. At this time, Mr. Chairman, I just want to remind the board, I am on a panel presenting at the BSBA convention. Not that anyone has to come. Oh, boy. I'm at the convention right there. Feel free to, you may be the only ones there. Which session is that, Dr. Cotton? It's on the Thursday. Yeah, the Thursday. It's at around, it's right after lunch. It's on Thursday. So it's using board docs. Okay. 
And uh, it's, it's kind of embarrassing for our superintendent to be presenting and look around and nobody, no support staff there, no cheerleaders. <laughs> so it would be kind of nice uh, to take that into consideration. Okay. This time we'll move into the work session, school board meeting, high school redesign. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Minner is here to talk to you about our high school redesign. And the reason it's so important that we do this today is because uh, Mr. Minter and Mr. Rodriguez have been working with various stakeholders, students, counselors, administrators, uh, parents, uh, teachers, to talk about high school redesign. And, and it's important that we have this conversation now because there's some budget on uh, what we do for next year. And of course, there will be budget implications for the next few years. So I want to make sure you have a sense of where we are today. Mr. Minter. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, we passed out earlier a hard copy, so that way you would have it in your hands for the right notes for us, uh, areas you see we could improve upon. But like Dr. Cotton said, we've met with multiple stakeholders, with guidance, with principals, with teachers, with students. Uh, we've tried to hit the gamut of everyone that is involved in what we do at high school. Um, and we wanted to share with you where we are currently. Uh, as you can see at the document, it says 25, and that's credits for a standard diploma, and 29 for an advanced diploma. Uh, we go above what the state requests, which the state is um, saying 22 and 26. We're more stringent, and we say that, no, we want our students to be better prepared for when they leave high school. So what you see in front of you uh, and on the screens is what a ninth grader, a 10th grader, an 11th, and a 12th grader needs to obtain a standard and an advanced diploma. What we've listed at the bottom is also other considerations. So where our students need to take so many SOLs to, to re receive a standard or an advanced diploma. Uh, and we've listed out what each elective and which each credit actually means. Um, it should be noted that you know some students don't want to take her science and that they would like to take uh, biology. And that can be done with allowing by asking permission from the principal. As you look further down on the bottom of the page, you see the Academy for Global, or of Global Studies. And that's our Warrior Tech and our Bengal Tech Academies. And what we've noticed is that we need to have these aligned to where students at one school or the other are taking the same material. Uh, it's gonna support what we're doing in our buildings. It's gonna support their staff members and those students to be better prepared in our two new tech programs. So what we've done is we've looked at Biology and Health D9 uh, in the ninth grade year, along with World History and English 9. Uh, we're doing Ecology and English 10 uh, as their year long, and World History 2 would be a standalone. In the 11th grade, we look to do U.S. Virginia History and English 11, and that's APDE or for, uh, a non-APDE uh, class. Uh, and in the 12th grade, we're looking to do U.S. Government with English 12, and adding in that capstone, uh, sort of an A-B schedule with the Casto project also being worked on. Uh, and that's more of a passion project. So students have an interest in um, in their horse riding and, and how that works with students with disabilities. And whatever that passion may be, that's what the project is that student can choose. And then they're given the support of those English 12 and government teachers. So this is what a student would take in high school. And then what Dr. Cotton and everyone was talking about earlier is our Career Academy. And that starts on the next page. Our Career Academy, we started this past year with cosmetology. Uh, and we have students who are going to our CCL currently at Fixboro um, and taking cosmetology there. And they're taking cosmetology one or cosmetology two. Uh, and that's students from Magna Vista and Bassett both. But what we'd like to do is we'd like to add in a business background for these students because what we don't want to do is prepare them to work in the cosmetology field and not have a background on how to run an actual business. So they need to have an understanding of if they're going to work at a chair, how much that chair is going to cost, how much they need to make on a monthly basis, or if they're going to open their own business, how much is rent and how does that all play into the factors. So what we found was it was important to go back and look at this and put some business foundation, some actual online marketing programs in with those students. So we started online cos or cosmetology this year and we're revamping and making it better for those students. I just want to add that you know, they are going to be taking clients at least two days a week. Uh, the caveat for 
programs we put at the career academy is the expectation is they run as a business. So they, the students are going to actually run a business. It's not going to just be taking courses. We want to give them that that real life experience. Two days a week. What what days are they going to be? Uh, Reverend Arp and I are going to be. Over. <laughs> we, I think we talked about Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Thursdays we look at. Yes. We'll let you know when that's ready to go. And um, that's real life experience. That's what we're. we're Reverend Arp will give a sample. <laughs> Well, like Dr. Captain said, when we move to the Career Academy, we want those students to open their own businesses or to have that business foundation while they're there. Um, future educators is something we already currently do. Uh, we have students in our buildings that work with early childhood and work in our elementary schools at this point. Uh, we're looking at possibly having those students go two blocks off campus. Uh, in their junior slash senior year, depending on where they're at in the program, and going and working with teachers, and those teachers actually assisting the teachers at the high school with how they're doing mid-year and final reports. Um, they'll serve as students uh, for the teacher to help as, as an aid aspect and to kind of build our own educators. Um, and a lot of the pictures that you saw earlier, those are educators from this area who come back to this area, uh, like many in this room, uh, who feel like it's important to work with students in our community. Uh, what we'd like to do in the future around 21-22 is to actually have a preschool class in both of our high schools. And what currently, so some students do not have transportation. Uh, this eliminates any roadblocks for students who don't have transportation on a daily basis. They can go down the hallway and work with students in a preschool class with that early childhood uh, educator and with that um, that actual teacher that would be teaching preschool students in our high schools. Uh, this is something for the future, but as you can see, we're already doing this right now. Uh, and like Dr. Cotton said, this is about promoting what we're doing and making it better and rising to the next level. Uh, as you scroll on down, you can see motorsports. We currently already have motorsports in our buildings, and we work with PH uh, in a collaboration working in the Arrington building um, again now. Uh, and we're working with students in motorsports and in automotive technology. Uh, and these students are given an opportunity in their junior and senior year to go to uh, Patrick Henry Community College or the Arrington site uh, and work on different aspects of how to work with auto body and, and technical aspects of um, a car engine. Uh, we've actually spoken with other Martinsville individuals as well about how we can work on just auto body because that's a different aspect of mechanicals with the car. So we're looking into those avenues as well and maybe partnering with Martinsville on a different type of class that would be in the same field but a, a different specific career. As you flip to the next page, you can see what we're looking to implement uh, in the coming year, 18-19, and that is computer science. In the spring of this year, we have around 13 students at Bassett and 10 at Magna Vista who will be helping run a help desk, and they'll be our tech squad, uh, working with teachers and students regarding different technological uh, devices, uh, working with PowerPoint, working with Excel documents, and working with teachers to vamp up, what, revamp what they're doing in their classrooms. If a teacher is struggling with, how do I use my smart board to connect to certain devices? Uh, then these students will actually help them. But they will be given uh, troubleshooting areas in which they will go into our buildings and work with our teachers and our other staff members to improve what we're doing. Uh, in the future, though, what we're doing is we're sending sixth grade teachers and we're sending high school teachers to the Institute for Advanced Learning this summer uh, in which they'll gain training on integrating computer science class into their classrooms. So, in our history, in our uh, science, in our English, and in our math classes, they'll be integrating technology into each of the sixth grade classes that are a team uh, that students will be offered an opportunity to go into. And then at our high school level, we'll have teachers who are working to become cybersecurity trained or AP computer science uh, trained as well. In the future at Career Academy, we're looking to put an agriculture horticulture program in the building. And what will look like at the Career Academy at Fitzboro would be a veterinary science, a small animal care, and equine management and forestry program at that site. So if you can imagine a student in the ninth grade and in 10th grade getting a foundation 
of agriculture and horticulture, but they have an interest in veterinary science or they have an interest in equine management or forestry, then that student can apply to go to the Career Academy and actually have a higher level of understanding working with the different types of programs that we would have there. So a student at Magna Vista or Bassett could apply to the program and go to the program at the Fixboro uh, School. Uh, that program would be a two-year program. It would start with the base level uh, at, the, at the high school and then move to the 11th and 12th grade at the Career Academy and they would gain a further understanding of what those programs are like. They would give up two blocks of their day and you can see at the bottom if it notes two blocks or less than two blocks. If you look further down, you see industrial maintenance and these students would be doing the same thing. They would be going and getting that base general knowledge their ninth and 10th grade year, but then their 11th and 12th grade year going to the Career Academy and they may be doing things like a Habitat for Humanity home, taking orders from the community, uh, and revamping homes in our community right now. Uh, so in both of these, you can see where students would have that business at the world in their, in their building. They would be taking orders. Um, people who need to have their animals checked out could go there, uh, working with the SBCA, with the local uh, veterinary services as well. They're going to gain real world experience working within our community uh, to solve problems and gaining that firsthand knowledge of what it's like in the field they're interested in. The benefit to these programs is if they're not interested in it in the coming years, and they know that before they go to college and make decisions. The next program, which we'll be able to start next year, we've confirmed that with Patrick Henry, uh, is public safety. As we all know, we're looking at, at the future and we will have a prison that will be opening here in the near future. These students will gain legal studies in our buildings, uh, gain CPR first aid certifications, uh, in our buildings and then they'll move to PH and they'll start law enforcement and ENT and firefighting. So the program we already offer but we have not had enough to take, we're putting a new spin on it. So we're going to have ENT, firefighting and law enforcement. Now you cannot be an officer at the age of 18 but these students will have a leg up in our community because they're going to have the basic general knowledge they need to become a, a law enforcement agent or to become a firefighter and go to another community that has that or to become an ENT uh, individual as well. These would go two blocks off campus their junior and senior year uh, to Patrick Henry Community College. The health occupation, we need nurses and we need other types of nursing fields uh, in this area and like, like it was mentioned earlier, SOVA Health is going to partner with these students and I'll get to that in just a second. So our ninth and 10th grade students will gain their general knowledge in their schools and then Patrick Henry has created a class that will help with students who want to be physical therapists, who want to work in the nursing field, be dental assistants, or be pharmacy techs. And they'll gain medical terminology, basic anatomy in the 11th and 12th grade year. These students will have a leg up on any child or any individual applying to the nursing program because they will already have all of their general information, their 11th and 12th grade year, when applying for the nursing program at Patrick Henry Community College. Patrick Henry has also let us know that the students who complete this program will move into their nursing program and SOVA Health has said if they sign an eight year agreement, SOVA Health will pay for their education in college. They will also hire them to work an eight hour day in their buildings uh, for the next eight years. And no matter the field they want to go into, as long as it is in a nursing related field, they will pay for their education. They have to sign on for eight years. But, um, but that is an agreement they've already signed off on. So, okay, that's Martinsville and Danville. Uh, the next program is uh, Culinary Arts. Uh, once again, we're looking to add that business aspect into this. And imagine at the Career Academy at Fixboro, us taking the industrial arts students and revamping the building in that gym cafeteria space into a meeting room. And in that meeting room, our students in the culinary arts program will hold events. They can hold weddings, they can hold professional developments, they can even hold these meetings like this right here. We'll have food served, the students will do all of the work uh, under the direction of their teacher and provide a venue in which our students are running a business in our community. Any questions about the Career Academy Pathways or anything like this before we show you the next document? Thank you very much.
Okay, we've done a lot of work to, to make sure we're hitting the right area. So if you keep the document out and turn to the front of the page again, uh, we're going to flip to the, the web version. And as you know, uh, we're going to be presenting the program studies to you very soon. But what we felt like was important was that our program studies is a very large document. And how can we make that user friendly for our uh, parents and our students so they can understand what they're doing? So we came up with an interactive document. It's going to look a little different on the screens because of the, the displays that are involved with the screens, but it will look exactly like what you see here. So what you see in the wheel here is actually the profile of what a graduate can take at high school. Now, when we talk about the career academies and we talk about the wheel, there have to be choices that a, a student's going to make. They can't do everything. It's just not going to happen. But I want you to see that we have a general studies we have the ACE or early, child, or early college program. We have fine arts, obviously, in our buildings that are wonderful. We have the Piedmont Governor's School for Math, Science, and Technology. We're looking at an online version in which students will take two classes online, but be in our buildings two blocks. Uh, they may work or have uh, a, bit, a business that they've started. Um, the Success Academy, which is where our students who are not on track to graduate, but we're working with them to make sure they can get ahead, or to get back on track, not to get ahead, but to get on track for on-time graduation. We have our IT Academy through Patrick Henry, and those are students who are working on the actual technical aspect of fixing a computer. And that's a little different than the computer science and cybersecurity. So cybersecurity works on what's going on in the, in the internet world and things like that. I, the IT Academy is working on how to fix a computer that doesn't work. Um, the career pathways, which we just went over. The Academy of Global Studies, which is our new tech network. <laughs> Uh, and the Idea Academy, which is the Institute for Design, Engineering, Engineering. and, yeah, you know, they changed the um, academy to something else just this past week. Um, we, we've all been struggling. Yeah, yeah. they've I changed. What that stands for, but. Yeah, but that's our, that's a, that's an engineering approach to uh, what they're learning in our buildings. And, and then Patrick County, um, Patrick, Patrick Henry. Community College program. It's all about designing an entrepreneurial um, work and creating creating business ideas and Correct. prototypes. Correct. And then obviously our general studies uh, academy as well. So you have an overview of what the wheel looks like for a high school graduate in the program of studies. And we have high school information. We have the general directory, so that way you know who the principals are and who's at the building and how to contact the building. But then when you click on standard diploma, like I said, it looks a little different here, but actually what that looks like is it actually looks like what a standard diploma looks like. And as a parent, if you're not sure, okay, what does English 9 consist of? I can click on English 9, and it specifically tells me what English 9 looks like. Then I can go back and say, okay, well, that's what my ninth grade student is going to be taking in English. What does their math class look like? So then I scroll to, or I click on the math 9, and I can see what types of math my student can take. So it's more of an interactive document, and we've done that for uh, the standard and the advanced, as well as and you can click on Academy of Global Studies, and you can see what our Warrior Tech and Bingle Tech combined classes look like. So if you click on the combined class of Biology and Health and PE9, it gives you a description of what that class would look like. So what we wanted to do was make this more interactive, more user-friendly for our parents as well. If you click on ACE Academy, because, you know, I want my students, they're ninth grade, but I want to know what they need in ACE Academy, you can look and scroll down and see, okay, courses prior to their junior year, and I know what my student needs to take to get into the ACE Academy. If I want to go to the IDEA Academy, I just scroll down, click on what IDEA Academy consists of, and there I am. I know exactly what I need to take. I'm ahead of the curve, and, and I don't have to flip through the pages. Uh, if I want to flip through, I have that document as well. Let's go back to the wheel. <coughs> any questions about any of this? Idea is innovate, design, engineer, and accelerate. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. So I can call on you next time. We'll talk about <laughs> <it>. <laughs> each other because we, we've made up all kinds of things for each other. So yeah. we're, okay. We need to memorize that. Well, Adam, any other questions?
Any questions about this? This whole program will be made available to parents to look at? This will be live on the website after we present to you the program of studies, and we agree the program of studies is ready for production. I think it's great. As a parent, I think it's great. We may have to provide, if it were me, I had to be provided some training to do all that. Yeah, and that's been part of the talking points as well, is when we're having students meet with guidance counselors, having a guidance counselor sit down with them and show them that picture of, okay, you're on the standard. This is what you're thinking about doing. Let's click on your ninth grade year and what it looks like when they go to the eighth grade and when they talk about it at the ninth grade. Okay, here's what you've met. All right, here's what's next for you. So that way it's very visual. And sending this information, this information right here with career academies and everything, home to parents so they can actually look at it and have that interactive link so they can look at the different requirements. But is there flexibility knowing how people change their minds once they select one of these at some point later? Can you still make them? Yeah, that's one of the things we try to make sure that if you're picking, let's say you want to do cosmetology, you get in there and after a year you're like, you know what, I don't want to do that. Most of our students already have that industry certification before they get to that 11th grade year. They can switch to another program. They may not be able to complete the next program, but they definitely can switch to a new program. I did share this with the students, and they were very excited about the equity piece that we've been talking about for a long time, making sure that all students have access to all the same programs. But they're also excited about the online option where they can do a couple courses online, trying to get out of the mindset that all learning takes place in the school building. Some of the learning certainly can happen outside of the building and outside of the school day, so we're trying to open that door. And what's not captured here is we've been working with some students who've gotten jobs, and they're leaving school early to work a job, and we've been building in a career seminar that they will attend if they do that option. So we're trying to use all these as learning opportunities. This is the spectrum of programs available there. Is that something that you all have, you guys, the staff here, have come up with because you think it fits this area, or is it something we've picked up from somebody else? I mean, this looks great to me. Yeah, so what we've done is we've looked at the careers in the area as well as careers in the state and how we can meet the needs of our students leaving us to move into careers in the area but also in the state as well. So we know law enforcement is going to be one because of the new jail. We know that nursing is definitely a need. We know that obviously auto body shops are needed everywhere. Everyone that drives a car is going to need a mechanic to work on their car. And in forestry, forestry and agriculture is one of the top growing jobs in our area because a lot of farmers are retiring or not going in. A lot of people are not going into the field. So we've looked at that. There is a commission that's put together looking at jobs in the Commonwealth, and we've looked at that and how students can be affected. Our computer science students, when they graduate high school, they actually can get jobs making double what a teacher makes out the door as an 18, 19-year-old. So we've looked at all of those aspects and making sure that they are certified in certain areas when they can go out into the real world, go to college, or have a job. The three top areas for our community are IT, health care, and advanced manufacturing. So we wanted to make sure that those were captured in these pathways. Yes, sir. I think this is really, I like this a lot. I'm somewhat familiar because I have a granddaughter who went to graduate who's starting in a, it's like a program in high school that leads you right into, prepares you to go into the nursing career. And the whole high school curriculum in that program was geared to send the person that direction. I'm glad to see you looking at this. Knowing what my passion is, I don't see JRTC mentioned anywhere. 
that? No, we're definitely not doing away with JRTC. That's definitely not taking place. And we can't capture everything in there, but JRTC is a leadership program that we've actually talked about a lot as a leadership model. It's actually captured in general studies right now, but it actually is a leadership program that we've discussed, having a leadership team and students that are involved in ROTC. So it actually, this wheel has changed half a dozen times in the past two weeks, and it may change again because we're not done with this. And the beauty of this and both of these documents is they're living documents in that as we see an area of need or an area of focus, we're actually building that into what we do. Okay. Because what I'm hearing from the junior ROTC instructors now is that Warrior Tech and Bingo Tech is really cutting them apart. Can you have a happy medium? It's cut, how, I don't, I can look into that definitely. Yeah. And the problem is when you have small, smaller high schools, you know, because we can, we can argue that the band program, you know, with some anticipation of mass, that that's really cutting into the choir and the theater. So anytime you have popular programs, they, you have a limited student body, it does impact other programs. So we have to find ways that we can all work together to complement each other. One of the things when we were creating the career pathways was to make sure that we looked at programs and they did not impact us in scheduling. If I'm a student in a tech program, I can still do the career pathway. It may vary which pathway I can pick, but we did look at that when we were talking about this. I have heard from JROTC as well as horticulture that the students from the new tech program were very different from the students that they received from the traditional classrooms. And as far as leadership and self-advocacy and agency, they come in the door with much stronger skills than other students. So I have heard that. It was actually a topic of conversation. We had a school visit last week and they were talking about how well do communicate, how well do students communicate with others. And the students who have been through the tech program are a league above because they've had that additional training. So there's talk of how we can embed that in every group as well. So that communication and collaboration is key. Those skills are critical. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thank you all very much. Good work. You guys and I'm sure other staff members have participated and were involved in parents and students and teachers. I think everybody's had a crack at that. Yeah, just about everybody has, definitely. I think it's important, particularly that teachers are involved in this too, because it's going to be successful. They have to support it also. Right. And sometimes it's hard to support something that you didn't have a part in. Right. So I applaud you for involving them also. I'm also happy to hear that you have a chance that you realize that students' expectations change as they progress through the year. I had the unfortunate incident as a high school student to enroll in the program. And when I get to the 10th grade, I realize that I'm not college bound. I want to switch. He says, no, you're stuck with me. Right. Yeah, that can't happen. We have to have flexibility. We do have programs where students have to, I mean, in the new tech program, we ask them to stick it out for at least a year because they're year-long courses, but they can get out after that. The problem you have is if they leave the middle of the year, they haven't completed the year-long course, and now they're going, you know, so it doesn't work out. But other programs, they have to endure for a semester. It looks like if I've heard your message clearly, some of these programs would, the final two years would take place at Vicksburg. 
some would take place at Patrick Henry and some would actually take place in the community. Correct. Yeah, we already have a house that we need to flip, and that's the one that we bought with our <laughs> Meadowview property. So I think that might be our first project. Thank you. Uh, the budget update. Uh, I don't have a lot to share with you today, uh, but I did want to um, uh, just go through uh, as a reminder. We have our budget priorities that are listed here uh, that we approved under each goal. I'm not sure what's happening there on the screen. Do you want the remote? I'd love to have the remote. That would make my life a lot easier. Thank you. Is there a reason why that's on the bottom of the screen? Okay, tell me what I'm what I'm not doing correctly here. Oh, I know. I don't know why it's coming in. Pages here, but these are our um, goals that we voted on under high quality instruction, the monitor and, impl and implementation of instructional initiatives to provide students um, with a rigorous, relevant instructional program, um, making sure that we create engaging learning environments for our students that promotes college and career readiness, which again, I heard a lot from our strategic planning groups. Um, goal two, of course, uh, those competitive salaries benefits for our staff as well as professional development. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with this right now, but uh, goal three, uh, we have some kind of automation on here. Goal three is going to be your safe and orderly learning environment, and then goal four is cutting edge technology, and then family community engagement is goal five. These are our current strategic plan goals that we've aligned to our budget priorities. Uh, just want to tell you where we are right now as far as our budget process. We have, uh, you know, we did approve the budget calendar. Uh, I have received all of the requests from departments and principals uh, with budget requests, and the senior leadership has been going through these diligently to determine our priorities. Uh, talking about our next steps, we are um, completing this review, and we're creating a, a short list of items that are on the list for budget. We're also um, trying to come up with some estimates based on staffing projections. We're also awaiting the governor's budget, which typically we do not receive until December uh, 15th is what we're, when we're anticipating the governor's proposed budget, and we'll use that as our baseline, our, our baseline for, for planning our budget as we, as we have done in the past. Uh, we don't have anything listed here for VRS rates, but I have been told that uh, to expect those to be, um, I think we've gotten a couple of estimates on what, what that will be, and it doesn't look like there'll be an increase, which is good news. Uh, but again, I, I'm waiting to get the official word on that. So the reason I wanted to bring up the budget to the board at this time is because I want to make sure that I include you all in the process early and often throughout the process. Um, I don't want it to be where I come to you with all of the other <laughs> recommendations at the end and then um, when you have not been able to, to check in. I did ask you for feedback at our board retreat and something that you all mentioned to me that you is a priority for you is the stipends. You know, we've been talking a lot about the extracurricular stipends and what I plan to bring to you will be some recommendations on uh, what we think we should do over the next few years with the stipends, as well as potential cost for those. So I know the stipends were a priority. I also know that the board noted steps uh, for the teacher scale, as well as uh, salary uh, increases for other staff as a priority as well for you. So I wanted to make sure that uh, you knew that we're looking at many different scenarios with salaries. What would it look like if we did a one-step increase for teachers or a two-step increase? What would it look like if we did a two-step increase on 1% across the board? Because I know the board did raise concerns about the top of the scale, but you know that if we just do steps, 
that doesn't affect everybody. It depends on where you are on the uh, on the step. And uh, so that's a priority that I know I've heard from the board that I need to be, be looking at. Uh, something that I also want to make sure I bring to your attention, all those great things we just presented with the career pathways and some of those things. Um, we are working diligently to get equity across the board. And I thought we had achieved equity this year. But unfortunately, Patrick Henry Community College had some retirements happen, and that created uh, a, an issue. And I'll give you an example. The HVAC program at Magna Vista is not being offered because we were going to offer that through Patrick Henry Community College. And the um, horticulture program is not being offered to Bassett students right now. That was going to be offered through Patrick Henry Community College. So we still have a couple of inequities that have been resolved. But when we presented all of those different options for those career pathways, that will mean that we'll take a couple existing teachers, career and technical teachers, and move them over to the Career Academy at Pittsburgh. Uh, that also means that there will be some staff positions that will have to backfill. And let me give you a couple examples. We've talked about putting horticulture putting a horticulture, agriculture teacher at Bassett High School because the FC program has taken off and uh, that's been very popular and very well received. We wanted to see how that went before we talked about adding a program to Bassett. Of course, you may ask, well, are the Bassett students interested in that program? Well, we did a survey of all of our upcoming students and we had uh, over 400 students that expressed an interest in a, a horticulture program at Bassett High School, among other programs that we, we had included in the survey. So there is interest. So that's important for you to know. Um, also, if we move the industrial maintenance program over, then that's going to require us to need a building management teacher at both high schools to do the intro work for ninth and 10th grade. So that could be a backfill position. Uh, if we move the vet science program over to the career and technical career academy, then we may have to backfill, maybe not initially, but maybe down the road, that position. So the reason I say all that to you is it could be a couple positions that I'll be advocating for that will support the career pathways discussions that we're having. And what we've learned is not only is it the program that's important, it's the teacher, it's the instructor. And I tell you, some of the instructors that we're talking to about building these programs will have a following, if you will. They'll have students who will follow them to the other side of the county to take their programs. So, um, so these are just some things that I want to make sure that you're aware of. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is if we are developing this career academy, there's going to be some capital work, improvement work that's going to have to happen. Meaning if a vet science program, Quantum program, uh, small animal care goes over there. Uh, we're going to have some cows and goats and chickens over there too. Okay, so we're going to have to build a barn and we're going to have to have some fencing. And if an industrial maintenance program goes over there, we're probably going to have to build a big uh, steel works, uh, you know, workspace behind the building as well. So there will be some capital improvement. Um, we estimate that that will be close to uh, $500,000. It happens that um, we probably can take that out of carry forward. Okay. This, is a, this is an important uh, initiative that we want to support. So I'm telling you all of this because it's aligned to our mission and vision, but it's also going to have some budgetary impact. So I uh, just <coughs> wanted to share that with you now so that as you start having these budget discussions, uh, you're aware of it. As more of these uh, programs begin to take up space out there, will it be necessary to make some different arrangements for the yeah. programs that are there now? Uh, will they still stay there? The, the alternative, alternative you talking about the alternative education yes. program? Uh, we our, our plans right now are to move the alternative education program to council funding for next year. That would certainly and we would move our adult ed, our alternative education, our regional program. The only real work we have to do over there is um, we have little, little toilets, right, little bathrooms. So we have to upgrade those. <laughs> uh, 
uh, because they're for little people. Uh, but other than that, um, we'll have ample space over there. And it's more centrally located, uh, so we feel like that, that makes sense. So you're right. And, and, it, and the Bigsboro site is not a huge building, but there's a lot of land available for us. So um, we are feeling like in the, in the next several years, we can accommodate some of the programs that are going over there. And um, we also may be able to accommodate some programs at Collinsville Primary down the road if we need to. So that's just something that we need to think about. So I share all that with you to kind of tell you where, <coughs> uh, where we are in the budget process. I want to make sure I've captured your priorities. And if I haven't, uh, I appreciate you kind of letting me know if I'm off target or if I need to add something to my list because I don't want to I don't want to not address your, your priorities as, it, as we move through this process. So I'll open it up to the board at this time. Any 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 items you'd like to add or, or if you'd like to affirm that I'm on the right track? Did you mention uh, adding a capital improvement line or a capital? I didn't, but thank you for saying that. Um, uh, that, that is an item that I, I'm going to be looking at is adding some additional capital improvement added to the yearly budget. And that, I mean, I know we've talked about that through the years, but after having kind of a close call about our carry forward last year and essentially being directed by at least one member of the Board of Supervisors that that's how we should approach that, I would strongly encourage us to add that. I mean, how much we put in that item obviously is open for debate and combination with the rest of the budget, but I think we do need that. Yeah, my initial thoughts were um, looking at about 500000 in, in there. Um, what that would do is that would give us guaranteed access to up to a million dollars in additional capital because we have a guarantee, even though the carry for is not additional, it's our savings. <laughs> but at least it would give us guaranteed access to up to a million dollars a year, and then that might be a starting point. I'm glad that Dr. Stonebach brought that up because that was one item of discussion in the Archwood District on the school board and the supervisor is the need for a capital improvement line. And uh, that's something. Uh, something long range, perhaps maybe short range. But back uh, when we had the five high schools, we decided to consolidate into two. We decided then, the old school board, and Ms. Flanagan remember that, was that we would use the money saved to upgrade all of our existing facilities. Fortunately, we started on the east end, we worked to the west. We got as far as Collinsville and uh, John Red, and we ran out of money. So we finally got John Red and Collinsville going. But we still have Sandal. Hello, folks. We still have Sandal to consider. And also, while we're working on this, the fact that uh, G.W. Carver, the cafeteria and kitchen, the kitchen, G.W. Carver is the largest elementary school in the area now. It has the smallest kitchen space of any of our cafeterias. So let's keep in mind that when we're moving forward with our improvements. Mr. Miller, you just named the, the top two capital improvement projects. On our list behind, behind the Bassett work that we're doing. But you're exactly right. We need to expand that cafeteria at GW Carver. We need to make a, a, a decision about Sandville. I know some of our initial conversations have been to do some, some lower cost upgrades to Sandville um, for the time being and then determine um, at some point in the future our next steps because we know the Sandville project, I think, is close to $5 million if we really did it the way that we um, need to do it, but but um, what Keith and I have talked about is can we do some upgrades with flooring and, and painting and upgrade classrooms, and I'm happy that they've moved all of the classrooms into the building. Now the only things going on in the portables are the uh, itinerant classes or the um, extra support uh, classes where they're always supervised traveling with, a, with an adult. And I know that we've also been working on putting fencing up out there. Because we still have to worry about the popularity of Battle General. People are walking through the property to get to Battle General. So 
that we've talked about uh, fencing up there. Uh, but we're looking at doing some, some upgrades to improve the learning space. Uh, but you're exactly right. We need to make some decisions on what we're going to do for Sandville because we, ideally, we, we don't want to have any portables out there. Anything else? Are we on target? I think so. The only other thing, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the thoughts have been mentioned by the board members, but uh, how short are we on bus drivers? Because I, I know I've seen the posts many times of, you know, we're looking, hunting, needing. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Um, we are uh, at a critical point right now with our bus drivers, and we are, we've been there for a while. So some of the discussions we're having that will have budget implications is we are really going to have to look at our, our extra trip rate that we pay our bus drivers um, because we're having a difficult time getting them to run uh, athletic events, extracurricular, as well as during the day runs. And we have not addressed those, those hourly rates in a long time. We're also looking at a need for maybe a, a certain number of full-time drivers that we can use to do all these extra runs uh, because you gotta be careful when you give them extra runs. If they go over a certain number of hours, you have to provide health insurance. So um, we are in the throes of that conversation right now. And we also wanna make sure that we are competitive, that we can recruit um, good drivers and um, we need to start new strategies where, where we get we get calls on transportation. We ask them if, they, if they're interested in applying to be a bus driver. <laughs> uh, we, we've actually we've tried everything that we could think of. Uh, we're recruiting people all over the community, and, and we're hoping. Uh, I, I laughed a little bit because I was standing with Mr. Zare and Dr. Ball at a football game, and I tried to recruit a parent to be a bus driver. I think. Uh, so we're all we're all on the point right now where we're trying to do everything we can think of to recruit, but but that's going to possibly have budgetary. Uh, I'm almost sure that it would. And the top of our consideration when we're thinking about that is that whatever we do, we're going to be competing with our surrounding jurisdictions because they all too have a shortage of bus drivers. Yeah. Every superintendent is talking about it. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Sounds like we're on the right track. Thank you all for, the, for that, and uh, I guess, Mr. Chairman, we're ready for close. At this time, we're going to entertain a motion to go into closed session to discuss the following items. Item A, Code 2.2-3711, Grant 8, Grant 1 of the Code of Virginia, appointment and separation of personnel. Second, we go up in the closed session to discuss the aforementioned items. All in favor, we'll keep our raising right hand. Okay. We'll take about five minutes. About five minutes break. Okay.